it's on you guys. Okay. Wait, do you want, oh, how do you share our screen? <laughs> say on the bottom, on your bottom toolbar, it should say share screen. It's in a green. Oh, okay, sorry. I probably have like... yeah. Okay, okay. So we worked on a poem. We did a poem about the song. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so first we would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Sandy. My name is George. My name is Miyoko. And today we chose to, you know, make um, a poem about Loaded Bases by Nipsey Hussle. And to start off, I did a mild, um, a mild analysis about about it. So, oh, damn. And it's like right here. Um, Loaded Bass is a meaningful track at the end of Nip Nipsey Hussle's album, Victory Lab. In an article Nipsey was interviewed on, he talked about each song and their highlights, discussed the times when he was 15, his, adult, his adolescent life, thinking he had it all, talking about how he, how he was being pulled in a certain direction that is hard to bounce back from. Nipsey had given up on music when he was a teen. It goes back to teens giving up on their, on their various dreams and trying to measure up to a dependence and being celebrated. Quote unquote, even quote, quote unquote, even on the shallowest level, signifying that that on a low level, we all want to feel these things, have money, praise, etc. Growing up, he didn't he didn't see anyone on the streets that ever that ever made millions. He understood how how long of a haul it was. A person hustling, trying to make it big, not only to not only be known but to survive. He he sacrificed his belongings, things that belonged to, that pulled him towards a negative direction, which ended up being the best decision he ever made acceptance and moving along. And we will now be presenting our poem. All right, so Loaded Bases by Nifty Hustle. My words are for those who feel left out having colored skin. Our words, our voices are the most powerful weapon we could use. The louder we speak, the more people on the winning team. Feels like the timer is ticking. Still in a world of ignorance, Everyone rolling with us at the end is coming home with the winning team. Color scheme is definition of failure for people on the opposing team. Spoke up and seen things changing for my people. Every few years, there are children born who can't overcome dire circumstances. Maybe if society had given them chances. Those who have made it speak in a language based on how they interpret life. Keep your head up high because your life will thrive. Being a self-made person is hard to achieve in this world. So many challenges and obstacles to be hurled. There's much more to lose living the street life. Poverty and crime and lack of opportunities can make someone pick up a knife. Self-made with a suit and motivation, got these negotiations rolling on the table without hesitation. I got no shame in my name and that's on dedication. I keep, I keep this inspiration to represent this nation. Just a kid in South LA walking these streets like Southern Avenue created y'all associated with these organizations. It really is a blessing demonstrating I truly made it. And that's, that's all. Um, let's do this. Oh, oh, I totally forgot to share my screen I, myself. No, you're good. Um, when you share a screen, you can't. Um, your your camera gets covered up. So you are. Oh, okay. Let me uh, stop let me share. Back to the group. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, so at this point, we'll open up to questions. Um, just, and I'll, I'll start it off. First of all, very good job. You guys did a hell of a job. I like the um, the poem. I think that was a great touch to show your creativity. A little round of applause for y'all up there. Um, so Thank for you. me. My, my question, the poem, um, one, like what inspired you to do the poem? Um, two, how did you guys cultivate the poem? Did like each person write a separate part? And then, you know, so how, like, how, how did you guys come up with the cultivation of the poem? Um, we, with the poem, we just chose it randomly. We didn't like, um, I thought we, it was kind of, a, it was kind of like a freestyle thing. Cause some of us, um, some of us ended up rhyming and some of us didn't. And we thought it was a great touch because it was just like 
since it, it was a song, like also poems can be a, like a type of musical vibe. So it's just like a poem went along with the song. Sure. And for the poem, we all did two stanzas, four lines each. Sure. And then um, how would you relate to what was discussed in the song to what's going on in our moment now? Um, people wanting to make it big, like being self-made, like trying to like survive in this world. There's a lot of like poverty, crime, and lack of opportunities that people don't like that that stumble upon and they wanna like make it big, but there's chances like that that they stumble upon. So they just wanna like, and sometimes they can't get away from that. So it's just like, it brings them back to, you know, wanting to like achieve greatness. Does anybody else in the group wanna add or comment? Um, yeah, going off of what she said, I really think that uh, there's not a lot of opportunities for colored people. So I feel like the song really relates to that, showing them how much work they have to put in than what other people would. And just showing the circumstances of their neighborhood, their community on how there's gangs, there's violence, there's crime. And it's just really hard for them to grow when they have these issues attacking them and preventing them from progress. So, um, does anybody else have any questions um, for the Nipsey Hustle group? Again, everybody should have some type of questions, right? That's part of the, the project is to engage in conversation. I had one little question. Um, I didn't know what salt meant. I think on the last um, paragraph or the last stanza, um, she, the salt, S-U-L-T. I was like, hey, what does that word mean? I don't know, I just. You guys have a, I want to respond to that? I think um she put soup. Oh, LOL, never mind. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? I have a question about the analysis. Okay. Um, yes. When you guys wrote, um, was it just one person who came up with it, or did you guys all like come together and like say this is what we thought of this and put it like together? This is what all we thought of this. Like we all pitched in ideas because it's just like the analysis, like at first it was hard to, you know, write. And then like we went, we we went back to like articles and then I had like an article like in the on the bottom, like to guide me. And some sort of like ideas from the group. What inspired you guys to write a poem exactly? Because, you know, poems are really hard and poems can be very emotional. So like, why exactly out of like all the type of poems you could have done or a PowerPoint, why exactly a poem? I say like, it's the vibe that the song gives you. Oh, you can go ahead if you want. Take it away, George. Yeah, like I'd say it's like, it's the vibe the song gives you like, you just hear it and like, you just think about it like, oh, I can make a poem out of this. So I'd say like, it's a vibe the, the song gives you. Yeah, I think for me, listen to the poem, some of it sounds like it could be laid over the actual track. Like even how, like there's bars in the stanzas, right? Like even the rhyming scheme, if I was hearing the beat of the song, it seems like as if you wrote it to the song almost. So that, that's something I picked up on. Uh, that's pretty dope. Anybody else has any questions for this group? All right. Well, good job, you guys. Um, hell of a job. Um, who wants to go next? Thank you. Uh, we'll go next. Okay. Was that what, what song is your guys' group? Uh, Merrily by Rhapsody. Um, so, who do you want me to make the um, co-host? Um, I'll I'll share. Okay. So me, yeah. Uh, Actually, hold on. All right, um, Sandy, are you still the co-host? I don't know how to. Okay, let me, yeah, let me, we work. Oh, okay. Let me see. Okay, so Lizette, I'm making you host now. Okay. All right. 
And then, um, so Lizette, you, your camera, even when you open it up, if you go to mm -hmm. share your screen, it's going to close you out. But the rest of the group, you guys should have your cameras on. Okay. Okay, so we decided to do a presentation on the song. So it was me, Jimena, Esperanza, and Cassandra. All right, so let me start you guys off on the background of Rhapsody. So her real name is Marlana Evans, and she's from North Carolina. Her interest in rap and songwriting didn't really arise until she was in college and joined a music group at her school. Her debut album was released in 2012 and was actually nominated for a Grammy. One thing about Rhapsody and her music is that she focuses on describing the experience of a black woman and what that entails. We can really see this in her most recent album that just came out in 2019 called Eve. Each song in this album is named after and relates to an influential black woman. Some of these women are Nina Simone, Aaliyah, Oprah, Tyra Banks, and Miralee Evers Williams. Rhapsody covers the struggles of black women, the struggles that black women encounter, such as the difficulties of making it in the industry and how black women are only presented when they're being shown sexually. Um, in the case of Miralee, she talks about the horrible losses that many black people have to deal with due to their loved ones passing away due to racially motivated like crimes and murders. Um, throughout their lifetimes. And my group will go more into depth about this and Marilee. So the thesis of the song overall is that it was written to express the emotions about losing a husband from the point of view of an African-American woman. She describes the pain of the widowed woman, who in this case is Marley. And the song also expresses how violence and death of family is nothing unusual in, in their community, especially for those seeking change in the civil rights, with the civil rights movement. Okay, so for the analysis of the song, the title alone, Merrily, is referring to Merrill Williams, who was the widow of a civil rights activist, Medgar Evans. He fought for the, abolish, the abolishment of Jim, the, the Jim Crow's law prior to his, as, his, as, his assassination. And so the song is basically a reflection of the pain and all the suffering that all these, of just, not just the women, but just going through the fact of losing a loved one due to racism. And uh, what she does in her song is that she uses a lot of figurative language such as imagery and metaphors as you can see at one point um, when she when she says we got fire and it's big like California like Cali's she is referring to how all the people in her community are losing their love their loved ones and it's a problem just as much as um, California's wildfire wildfires are except that although it's making the same noise not everyone's caring about it um, she also refers to many of the widowed women of Malcolm, of Malcolm X, who are Coretta, and then Betty, sorry, Coretta's Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr.'s widow, and then Betty, who is Malcolm X's wife as well. And so to put it in perspective of how it is, uh, maybe a year ago, she also used the death of XX Tentacion um, to put in perspective of how everyone was mourning his death as a whole. And well, her method as her method for me was that she set us in the point perspective of the widow and then she after that she spoke um, from what they would go through she also uses other common act uh, common activists such as mlk and malcolm x to set her narrative and um like i said before she also used the death of x to connect to how the fans mourned his music yeah. So the lyric breakdown. So then we put the, the lyrics of the song here, but we just want to go over some highlighted portions of it. So like in the beginning where it says black widow, young kiddo, tear stained pillow, another black man died. So like this, this song is going through what basically the widow person really is going through and also the community. It's saying another black man died. Like it's nothing like, oh, this is just something that's happening right now. 
And then further on in the song, it says, we saw people cry, think about all of our people's wives, raise your kids in the world, they know it's safe to live. So it's highlighting like, like how the, the community, the society that they live in isn't safe for their kids to live in just because of the color of their skin, basically. And then later on in the song, it goes and it talks about people like Martin Luther and Trayvon Martin and saying like, oh, these these people, they're, they're some examples of who is dying like Martin Luther because of the civil rights. Trayvon Martin, I searched up Trayvon Martin. Basically, he's he was killed by a police officer for being suspicious. Um, that's really what he was um, killed for. And, and you can see that uh, that's not something that's not even justifiable. And it's it's basically going through that in the song, like our people are dying for nothing because just because of who they are. Um, and then later on, it, it's also going through, it goes to a part that says, that's a broken home. I could be on that. That's reality. That's a big fact. Because I'm, I'm Mary Black. So she's saying like that, what happened to Marley, I can see that happening to me because, you know, I'm, I'm also Black. Like I married someone like that. The society isn't safe. Um, anything could happen. That could really be me next. All right, hi everyone, I'm Jimena. So as mentioned before, how this connects to modern day. Um, so this song is dedicated to Marilee Ever Williams, a widow who lost her husband, um, who was a civil rights activist. And while connecting it to modern day, just within this year alone, you know, as we have experienced within this year, hundreds of men and women have lost their loved ones due to racism, for example, Courtney Ross was a fiance of um, George Floyd um, and Breonna Taylor's boyfriend who was Kenneth, Wa Wa it's Walker, but I'm sorry, that was misspelled, um, Tamika Miller, who was the wife of Rayshard Brooks. And, you know, as a result um, to all these people who are now, who have now lost their loved ones, um, they are now, you know, grieving the death of, you know, people who lost their lives that, you know, it was not meant for them to lose their lives like so soon. It was not an accident what happened to them. They were just, you know, living their life like normally going day by day. And then all of a sudden, just because, you know, they look suspicious because of a counterfeit bill that, you know, ended up being real. Um, or, you know, Rayshard Brooks who fell asleep in, uh, um, in a drive, who was covering a drive through and all of a sudden, just because of those reasons, they ended up losing their lives. So it relates to the song because rarely ever Williams, you know, she lost her husband and just because of the skin of the color of their skin. And also, you know, as, um, as a result of that, you know, it was a big movement that happened, the Black Lives Matter movement. And also relating to that, um, from hearing like in class, as I heard like in the past weeks and also from my close parent, close friends, like, you know, parents have to give their children the talk, which is basically um, a quote that I wrote down that says, raise your kids in the world that they know it ain't safe to live. Um, you know, children are now living, children, you know, specifically children of color are living in a world where it's not safe for them to, you know, be around. And if, you know, they get stopped by a police officer, it just looks suspicious, you know, they have to be a certain way, way, act a certain way for them to, you know, keep their lives, which is honestly kind of crazy, really wrong. And it's just not a way that, you know, people should be living in. Okay, so now that's the end of our presentation. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Is it if you can stop the screen sharing and we'll put it back to the group to ask the question. Um, first of all, great job. Um, I think you guys really did a good job of making your information very clear, um, plain and easy to digest. Um, couple of points in regards to Trayvon Martin, um, 
he wasn't killed by a police officer. Uh, George Zimmerman was just a normal civilian who was doing what he called like a neighborhood watch. In fact, when he called, made the 911 call, they told him to stand down and stay in your car. Do not engage um, Trayvon Martin. And he did it anyway. So we have, we have to draw, and I'm only bringing this up to draw the distinction that no, this individual was not deputized. He was not an active member of law enforcement. He was a regular motherfucker like you and me, right? And he just decided to hunt this individual down and murder him, right? Um, but a couple of things I, I thought that was interesting, especially I love how you guys brought the lyrics actually out and allowed us to view the lyrics. Um, you mentioned Broken Home, which is, is to me, even listening to the song, there's something that stood out. And, and I think the double entendre at play as it pertains to the broken home, I, I wanna make clear and, and you know make sure that everybody caught that. So one, there's a very large narrative as it pertains to black households and black families that they are broken homes, right? That the father is not in the home, right? And I think it's over 60 or 70% of black homes that do not have fathers in the home. So these are considered broken homes. But what Rhapsody is doing is she's problematizing this notion saying that the real broken homes stem from families who have to suffer these tragedies, right? Broken homes from people being murdered for, to racial atrocities, right? So that's one thing that I think is very important um, today in understanding the way that she's kind of playing with the, um, the double entendre. Um, also, she has this, the stands or the, the bar and the opening weighed in the water, I don't mean baptized, right? And so that goes back to the Negro spirituals. Um, that goes back to the song, you know, weighed in the water, God's going to trouble the water. So when, when you are fleeing from the plantation system, the song will say, you know, weighed in the water, wait here. And that does a number of things, right? It covers your tracks so they cannot map your steps no longer. And then two, it disguises your scent. Because what happens is when you run, they'll take the, the hounds, give them your scent and send them after you. So when you get in that water, it, it starts to mask that scent. Um, so just kind of things I, I wanna, um, for me, listening to the song that stood out, I also love how you guys um, talked about the method of the song. Uh, I thought that was a really brilliant way of um, applying what we've done in class and taking that analysis to what you're doing in the project. Um, so just my question is more so just in the cultivation of the project. Um, how did you guys go about coming up with the idea of doing the PowerPoint presentation? How did you guys seek to divide up the work? Just, I'm just curious to get to your guys' process. Okay, yeah, so we ended up, we started off by, you know, exchanging numbers. We made a group chat and we, um, we just talked on there. We said who would do what. Um, we didn't really assign. Everyone really chose their part. And um, that's how we went forward with it. And to add on, on like how we broke it up really, um, I don't, I'm not sure if it was Esperanza or Jimena, but they were like, why don't we just kind of do it how the vibe is in class, you know? Sometimes when you present to us, you uh, give a background of the author, the poet, and that's what we wanted to do with Rhapsody and then go on to uh, breaking it all down. Because for us, when you do that method in class, it made everything clear and there wasn't a lot of questions left. So that's what we wanted to provide the today. Yeah, and, and um, for me as an audience member, right? It was like, oh shit, that's dope that you're providing some background on who she is. Like one, somebody who's a really big fan of hers, right? And I, I love to promote her work. It was good to see you center her in the work as it pertains to what she's trying to do. And I also love how you placed us in the point of view that she's seeking to engage, right? The point of view of, of a woman who's been widowed. So that, that was really brilliant. Um, does anyone else have any questions for this group? You should have some questions. Oh, I had a question on the quote. I think was it on the like second or last? The one that says, raise your kid in the world, they know it ain't safe to live. I just wanted to know like where's that quote from? Like where they get it, where they got it from. Um yeah, that's um the quote is from part of the lyrics. So I just took the quote out from the lyrics and you know I made my own analysis of what I thought when listening to it. Anybody, any other questions? 
what are um hello and uh, what are your opinions like what were your opinions but bef like before you guys researched the song and were they changed after you researched the song does that make sense <laughs> I mean, for me, yeah, um, I got like a more clear point of view when, you know, I honestly, I listened to the song about more than 10 times and just to like, you know, get a real clear view and like, you know, understand it um, of what I was listening to. The first time I did not know that it was um, a woman, who, like the point of view of a woman who had lost her husband until, you know, I really took it like forward and like analyze and that took it and analyze um analyze the like lyrics like one by one and you know like the first verse I analyzed that first and then that's when I took it like forward and did like the second verse I don't know if like you understand what I'm saying <laughs> yeah I think it goes to say with whatever song you listen to at first whatever artist you like you first listen to the beat and you're not really paying attention to the words. You're just listening to the sound and how, it, like, you know, if you like it or not. But as you continue to listen to it and, like, pull it apart, it gives you a better understanding of the song. And you can connect to it at any level, even if you have or haven't experienced that before. Just by reading that and the way Just Rhapsody did it made you feel like, you know, I, I get what you're talking about. I feel you. I like how you said that. Anybody else? Okay, my last question, because um, just kind of piggybacking off what Cecilia mentioned, um, how did going through this process, listening to Rapsy, change one your opinion of her as an artist, or has it familiarized yourself with her as an artist? And then two, how has it, you know, um, changed the way you think about women MCs or women in the rap game? and then the content that can be delivered from women in the rap game, right? So if you were to do like a juxtaposition of what Rap Seas does and what she talks about, juxtaposed to your Cardi B's, to your Nicki Minaj, to your, you know what I mean? So just understanding the, um, not looking at a monolithic depiction of womanhood from rap, how did doing this project begin to expand your notions of what women could do in the rap game? Um, I can go ahead and answer that. So, um, you know, regarding that, I think like, you know, like when we listen to Cardi B, we like see more like of an explicit like point of view, you know, regarding women, like with her new song, like, you know, WAP, sorry to mention that, but you know, it's very like explicit toward, towards like women as, as opposed to like, you know, what Rhapsody is doing. She's bringing out like a bigger point of view, a bigger issue of like, what it truly is that black women are facing like nowadays and like you know the reality of like what their lives are you know once they lose a loved one once they get to experience that like I don't really think that like Cardi B really mentions any of that so you know they are very like different in like you know what they are used to like rapping I guess uh, Lizette did you want to add anything to anything that was mentioned so far um, well, to like your first point that you, well, your first question, um, I had never heard of Rhapsody before, um, before you like mentioned the song. So when I was like researching on her, um, and like, I listened to her all, her whole album, like while I was like researching her, um, and I just, I thought she was like a really great, like lyricist, like how we mentioned that she uses a lot of metaphors and she is definitely different than a lot of the rap artists that we hear right now like Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B and like you know everybody has their own style and she she's using her platform to like promote like her messages of like the struggles of black women and just and not only that but she's also using it to like praise like really influential black women like if you listen to her song Oprah on her um on the album Eve like she's like praising her for being like the first black woman that's a billionaire and yeah i just thought that she's just a really great artist yeah well thank you guys you guys did a hell of a job um everybody seemed very comfortable presenting their information um it seemed to be divided up very evenly um so just great job again um who would like to go next 
Uh, me and my group could go next. I'm sorry, who said that? I was looking down. Um, Diana. Okay, Diana, thank you. So Diana, you have um, Kendrick Lamar? Yeah. Okay, so who for that group wants to be the co-host? Um, you could change it to me. I'm going to be sharing the screen. Okay. Uh... All right, Dan, it's all on you. Okay, so we did um, Kendrick Lamar, and we got Mama. Our group members consist of me, Ingrid, Chelsea, and Celia. So before we actually get started, we have like little background on Kendrick Lamar. I'm pretty sure you guys know who he is, but like just a little background. He's an American rapper, songwriter, and a producer. He is known as one of the most influential artists of his generation because his his like people see his music as something more lyrical more than just music he was born in compton in 1987 and right now he is currently signed with tde with a lot of known artists such as SZA, school with j rock isaiah rashad and many more and one of the most important facts like to take from this slide is that he did visit south africa in 2014 and it did change his whole perspective and inspired the album to pimp a butterfly so the overall thesis of the song that we decided oh wait sorry okay. so the overall thesis that we decided to come up with is and throughout the song, he explains the growth he overcame and the self-realization that he experienced after he was facing the struggles his whole life. In the song, he thought he thinks he knows everything up until the point where he finally comes home in quotation marks. And he does talk to a young African boy, which changes his whole life, his whole perspective on life. So throughout the, the song, like he keeps mentioning the word home and home could to like to us, it could either mean his hometown in Compton or his ancest ancestral continent of South Africa. So just it's just better to keep that in mind when we present. And then so we're dividing it up by verses. So the first verse, it's um, thank God for rap. I would say it got me a plaque, but what's better than that? The fact that it brought me back home. And then what we decided to analyze this is being famous brought him back into his true identity and his roots. It kept him loyal and humble to his community. And to go kind of deeper into that, we thought that it meant that like, you know how people always switch up when they get money. Maybe Kendrick didn't like the million dollar lifestyle, which is why he strives to tell his story through his eyes. Meaning like he doesn't really care about the riches. He just cares about his community being Compton. Verse two is, if I'm generous at heart, I don't I don't need no recognition the way I'm rewarded. Well, that's God's decision. The significance of this is that nowadays when someone does a good deed, they post about it so the media can praise them. But in reality, we kept that good deeds in secret and strive to be actually good people. God will, will reward us. And then like a little example of this could be when Kendrick donated anonymously to the schools and he didn't like it wasn't really shown to the media because he didn't want people to know about it. So basically, like, he doesn't need the media's attention like other musicians do. And then verse three, it says, I met a little boy that resembled my future's nappy afro, gap in his smile, hand-me-down sneakers, bounce through the crowd, run a number on man and woman that crossed him. So in this part, he's basically uh, explaining about his trip to South Africa when he met the young African boy. So he did meet a lot of people to his trip to Africa. And in these little young people, he sees a part of himself in the child that he is painting the image of, meaning the same resemblance, the same characteristics he had as a child. So I don't know if you guys can see, but we highlighted the gap in his smile. So he's saying that the little boy had a gap in his smile. And then in the picture, you could see that Kendrick has a little like gap in his smile. And that's how he could relate to him in the way. 
and then verse three was divided into two parts. So part two, it's sun beaming, beaming on his sun beady beads, exhausted, tossing footballs with his ashy black ankles, breaking new laws mama passed on home training. So before we get started, beady beads means like the taut, the tight knotted balls in the hair that are attached to a person's scalp. You get them from a lack of combing. And then there's a picture for reference. And then ashy ankles, they're just like rough, dried out skin from the sun. You either get them like from not wearing lotion or if you have poor foot protection, meaning you don't, you know, you don't have shoes and you go outside on the pavement and you just walk around. So in this part, Kendrick depicts an image of a young African boy who is having fun despite being in poverty. So if you think about it, what what's the solution you like you you could come up to? like to have fun if you have no money or nowhere to go. And it's obviously like using a football or a soccer ball. So so to, um, I found this a good quote to connect it to, to, to today's society because Kendrick mentions how this boy is out breaking the rules his mother has home trained for him to do. So many black children are told to stay away from causing trouble so they, don't prov so they won't provoke law enforcement, just like the other group had mentioned. So in today's society, law enforcement is abusing Black people way too much. What they have, what they both have in common is that they're told to stay away from police officers just so, like, they won't get violated by the police officers. Um. Okay, this is Chelsea speaking. Um, this is the outro. It says, "I say, where you at? From the front to the back, I'm looking for you." I thought I found you back in the ghetto when I was 17 with the point thirty eight special. Maybe you're in a dollar bill. Maybe you're not real. Maybe only the wealthy get to know how you feel. Maybe I'm paranoid, hot. Don't lie to me. I'm suicidal anyway. So um, when looking at it the first time, I um, he repeated the word you, and um, we felt like you could either mean the feeling of achievement and uh, it says, I thought I found you, no, go back, sorry. Yeah, it says, I thought I found you back in the ghetto when I was 17 with a point thirty eight special. He thought he was understanding the feeling of achieving something when he got a 38 point special. Next. Then he goes on to say, maybe you're in the dollar bill. Maybe you're now real. Maybe only the wealthy get to know how you feel. Uh, can you click three times? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, in order to know the true feeling of achievement, you have to be wealthy or have money. One more. Yeah. Uh, near the end, he states, maybe I'm paranoid, huh? don't lie to me. Uh, sometimes when we achieve something, the feeling is not what we expect it to be or it's not as exciting. He says he is suicidal. You know, when one works hard and works so hard, they don't have that feeling of achieving something important. Um, we sometimes get lost and we feel stuck. One thinks that is the end. There's no way to get out of there nor find that feeling. And sometimes people go through these tough phases. Next. So this is our second interpretation of the you, and we thought it to be God. He says, from the front to the back, I'm looking for you back in the ghetto when I was 17 with the point three special. It's the same lyrics. Um, he's seeking God. He believes he found him when he got his pistol. Next. He then states, maybe you're not real. Maybe I don't need you anyway. He's questioning the existence of God. Is he real? Is he not? He's been through a lot. He comes to the conclusion that he's been on his own and that he probably only needs himself. And then he says, maybe I don't need you anyway. Don't lie to me. I'm suicidal anyways. Uh, this We interpret this as him losing hope or faith because he is in a state where he is lost. Um, the, um, the how does this connect to um, our this decade? The song connects to the modern age for reasons being that Kendrick has always been known for being a lyricist and using his lyric skills to influence the people who listen to him. 
um, during this decade, most people know and find it hard to, on where to fit in. By this, we mean like identity. We all wear these masks depending on the situation or place we are in. The song is about his experience uh, in Africa where he meets a boy and establishes a, a relationship. This then, this then sends him into like an identity crisis. This is very similar to what most people go about on a daily basis. We can we can see this through race, and and being one race or even multiple races and living in an Ameri and living in America can have a great impact on your identity. The reason why is that you're either brought to this country and being stripped from your culture, although not entirely, or trying to achieve great things through wealth, money, or fame. What society and school teaches us is that many of us feel lost in our country, our, in our culture and identity. To add on to today's society with the media and everything, we make we we wake up and find it hard to fit in anywhere. Therefore, some of us are are forced to put on this mask and and what we and hide what we really feel underneath. And uh, I chose these pictures here for the reason being that. Every day you wake up and you're and well for most of us we wake up and we're we're like oh well what are we gonna what are we gonna feel today how are we gonna act today where are we gonna go today and and how how are we gonna act in that place and I feel like uh, Kendrick really he would he doesn't say it like literally but I feel like well we feel like that this is what he really means because he lost his identity. When, when traveling to Africa and getting back to his roots. So so we felt like he had like an identity struggle throughout the whole experience. Is that it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, thank you. Again, good job, you guys. Um correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it Ingrid's in the group, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Did did yeah. she did she say something in the presentation or did I miss that? Yeah, yeah she um I don't know, I forgot which verse it is, but we had to send her a verse and she had said it. Okay. Um, all right. So for me, um, one, one thing I want to do just is to draw a connection between the three um, artists that we covered so far, right? Uh, so we started off with Nipsey Hussle, and then we moved to uh, Rhapsody. I don't know if you guys, for the group who did Rhapsody, I don't know if you've seen the cover to her album E. Um, the cover is, is an image of her in like braids, cornrows, straight backs which is something that Nipsey was infamous for, right? So she took that album cover on as a homage to Nipsey Hussle, right? And then as um, this most recent group poignantly points out that Kendrick took a trip to South Africa, I think in 2016. Um, so who inspired Kendrick to take that trip was Rhapsody. Um, her first studio album was inspired by her visit to South Africa. Um, the only featured art artist on um, The Pimp a Butterfly is Rhapsody, right? This is the song Complexion. She, he's, she's the only featured artist on that album. Um, she is the one that told Kendrick to go to South Africa. And because of the impact that it had on her, on her art and the way that she's seen herself, which in turn, Kendrick had the same experience. Um, so that, that's a thread that I, I do want to, want to thread together for you guys. Um, for this group, did you guys listen to just the song or the whole album? Um, I kind of listened to the whole album, but I only listened to it briefly because recently, um, I didn't even know, at first I didn't even know it was on that album, but I was on, I was on Twitter and they were like fighting about like the Grammys and stuff and how he lost to like a Taylor Swift album. And people are like really mad because he's such like the amount of like effort he put into the album and like it was actually meaningful and stuff. So they were, everyone was pretty mad. And I was like, I want to listen to like the whole thing, but I didn't really like listen, like analyze the lyrics or anything. Well, um, the only reason I brought, brought that up is because you got, and it's really profound how you guys picked up on the you, 
in his in his in the lyric, right? And what does he mean by you in the end of the song, right? Maybe the wealthy only gets to know how you feel, right? Maybe I found you in the ghetto with my 38 special. And that you that you guys were trying to decipher, and, and which one I didn't think about God, which is really is a good interpretation. But if you listen to the whole album, you get to hear who that you is. Cause I believe like in the second or third song in the intro, he talks about this conversation that he's having with Lucy. And, and Lucy's kind of presented as um, an evil spirit that will give you what you want. It will give you fame. It will give you fortune. It will give you all that you think you desire, right? So that you, if, and you would only know this if you listen to the entire album, that's why I, I asked that. But that you is really this character that he derives, Lucy, right? This, this character that will give you fame, that will give you fortune, which Lucy is short for Lucifer, which is also a name for, for the devil, right? So that, that's where he got the, the you from. But I really like the fact that you guys really teased that out and, and sought to understand that because that's a very important um, part of the presentation. Um, and I also like the fact that you guys posed the question, you know, where is home? And, and you left it very open-ended for interpretation. Um, but as you mentioned, Cecilia, the Grammys kind of also, his, pre, his, his um, the performance that he did at the Grammys provides greater insight into how he thinks about home. Um, and my last comment, how many, is anybody familiar with the term, I'm sorry, with the, the, the show, Martin Lawrence? Martin, the show Martin, the sitcom, mid nineties. Yeah, uh, so Eileen feels me. No, Eileen, you're the only one that watched Martin? I, 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 was, I was like, Alyssa, I know she about to give me some kind of heads up. Anyway, so the BDBs, right? Like that's that's where he gets BDBs from. If you know about Kendrick Lamar, he's a huge um, Martin fan, right? And you guys show the image of, of, of the hair, right? But really that terminology stems from um, really colorism, like just to call it what it is. If you watch Martin, you know what I'm saying when I talk about the colorism between one character, Pam, and the other character, Gina, right? Pam is a darker skin ca character. She's about my complexion. And Martin would always clown her for having nappy hair, right? And he would always talk about her beady beads, right? So that's why I say it's a colorism that comes into play. But Kendrick is riffing off of this terminology, beady beads from the sitcom Martin. Um, other than that, though, I, I really love the way that you guys disperse the um, information. I really love how you, I, I can tell from listening to you, you really engaged and grappled with the material and try to get an understanding. Um, does anyone else have any questions for this group? I have a question. Go for it. Um, I was going to ask, because you guys were saying about um, how, like, I guess the identity crisis thing, do you feel like, like, um, we are like I guess as m marginalized like we're put into this like mold that that's why we're so like focused on like the identity thing where like how do we act today does that make sense like, okay. no yeah um well I don't know personally I I felt that um everyone especially like especially me being like a Mexican-American um I, I find it hard on where to fit in. Like, I obviously don't fit into like the culture of a um, culture that America has. And, and, but I also don't fit in into the culture that my mom has and my, what my mother brings in. Like, I don't know, like I'm not Mexican enough to be Mexican, but I'm not white enough to be American. So I feel like a lot of us can relate to that because I know I have a lot of friends and they're like their family are like really like depends where you're from like I have some friends that are like really rancheras and like they come from the rancho and stuff and they like they have that culture and I'm like like that would be so cool to have but like I don't have it because I'm not like you know but I, I, yeah I, I personally feel lost in my identity but you know it's a constant struggle that that I face every day but it's fine <laughs> That's a really good question, Eileen. Um, Ingrid, did you want to add anything for the group before we move on? Um, no. Okay. Um, so what, we have 10 minutes left. I think we get through one more group and then we'll call it, call it a wrap. So we have- um, Can we go? Sorry. Yeah, go for it. 
And you're the Nina Simone group? Yeah. And then Emily, who do you want to be the co-host? Um, can you put Eileen, please? Yeah. Eileen, you okay with that? You got you got voluntold, so I just want to make sure you're cool with it. Okay. All right, let me make you the coast. All right. You are good to go, Eileen. And then again, just remember for this group, um, Nina Simone, if you can, have your cameras open. So to start off, uh, we did Four Women by Nina Simone. Um, I'm Andrea. I'm Emily. And I'm Eileen. Sorry, I was trying to read myself. So I think we should start off by explaining why we chose the slide colors. Yeah, um, we chose the the theme of our slides to go off with the whole like mood of the song, which is like slow and yeah, slow and like, steady. Yeah, it we chose black and white because it went with the tone of the of the song. It was more a uh, black and white type of theme to us. It seemed at least so. That's why we chose the color of the slides. Um. The Four Women is a song written by Nina Simone, and it was released in 1996 on the album Wild is the Wind. The song is about four women, that, hence the name. Those women are Aunt Sarah, Safrona, Sweet Thing, and Peaches. Uh, it's basically the story of their lives and how they've been treated in society as long as their physical traits. The next slide. These are the lyrics in the song. Uh, you can go to the next one. The, um, our analysis was that after listening to Four Women and getting our interpretations and the help of genius, uh, Nina Simone focuses on the idea of stereotypes women have been identified with throughout slavery up until now. She also gives the idea, the interpretation of what women, what every woman mentioned has been through in society. Um, our own analysis was that the names she used are, represent, are to represent every woman as an individual, giving the characteristics, and every stanza is also the woman's story. Can go on to the next one. Okay, so for the meaning, um, um, I quoted the lyric right there, but for that lyric that she says, my skin is black, my arms are long, my hair is wooly, and my back is strong. She says when someone when Simone sings this, it's like empowering and I feel like she's taking ownership of herself and her traits. Like, yes, I am this woman and this is my name. And instead of like trying to be littled by the stereotype, she's owning them and she's really saying, like, yeah, so what it is me and this is who I am. And I quoted the ends of each lyric. So when she refers the four women and Sarah, Safrina, Sweet Thing, and Peaches, she gives each like characteristic. So for on Sarah, she says, my skin is black. For Safrana, she says, my, my skin is yellow. Um, for Sweet Thing, she says, my skin is tan. And for Peaches, she says, my skin is brown. I feel like she gives like different sets of like characteristics for each woman to show like, even though like, yeah, we're defined by this stereotype, it shows how like, you know, not every black woman is the same, you know, there's like, there's range and you know even though there is a there is a stereotype and we can own the stereotype there's a lot more to us than just um than just the stereotype like we are individuals and we are human beings and we can be seen as a such so how it relates to today or how it's relevant to today so when i was looking up her lyrics 
her lyrics came in like stanzas like if it was a poem type of thing but obviously it's not it's a song but it came in stanzas so I broke it down to four and then in each stanza I picked words or like part of lyrics that stood out to me and then I related them to today's modern world so for stanza one I chose my skin is black relating obviously to black people today and then let me and then for the second part of stanza one I chose my back is strong strong enough to take the pain inflicted again and again so relating to how people till this day have to go through maybe not as severe things as other generations before them did but still like go through similar experiences and then for stanza two I chose the lyrics between two worlds I do belong and for that, I related it to people who come from different backgrounds and are split between two different ideals. And that just basically like um, relating back to the other presentation that we're talking about, where Cecilia was talking about how she's Mexican American and you're just kind of in the middle, but you feel like you're obviously belong to both of them. It's just that you're kind of split in the middle. Like I relate to them, I relate here. So, but it's different, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I also chose, my father was rich and white. He forced my mother late one night. And I related it to today's world by implying about rape. For example, last year in 2019, there was um, 406,970 women that were raped. And then for stanza three, I chose whose little whose little girl am I? Anyone who has money to buy. Again, I implied it to talking about today's world by sex trafficking. Last year in 2019, there were 22,326 trafficking victims and survivors. And then lastly, for stanza four, I chose my life has been too rough, relating to people who protest for their rights. And then my examples were um, like the Black Lives matter movement and then also to people who are immigrants and fight for their rights each day as well and then questions anybody yeah um if you could stop the screen share and we'll have the questions uh, as a group um great job you guys that was also really well um, one, I, I like how you included um, the tonal representation, like why you chose the colors that you chose. I thought that was a very good touch. Um, and also the shifts in the presentation, like the way that the slides rotated to the next, like little shit like that, to me, I'm into that. Um, you know, it's all part of your presentation. I, I thought that was a very good idea. Uh, I'm curious to know though, like whose idea was it to take colors that they felt fit with the vibe of the song? We kind of all incorporated it, if I'm being honest, because yeah. um, we were going through it and we, because there was a really colorful one, but we kind of were like, no, because it didn't really make sense because it's not like the song is very upbeat and has all these beats and we're like, this is calm and like, you know, it fits in with the tone because she, she sings it slow and steady. She's not like rushing and she's not rapping like fast. So I guess it just like all incorporated and when we we're picking it in. So we're like, oh, well, she sings like this. So we don't want to be dramatic. And to like add on, every woman's like story is also kind of like deep, so that also plays on to the why we chose the slide. Yeah, I thought it was a really good touch. Um, also, like let's just looking at the presentations, right? Like majority of the songs are are hip hop songs. Um, majority of the songs are uh, shit. Y'all, if y'all got iPhones, you're probably getting some alerts right now. Um, but the majority of the songs are hip hop songs. And then the majority of the songs are, are contemporary, right? They're in, in the 2000s, the 2010s. Um, you guys are the only song that is in the 60s. Um, you're the only song that was not a hip hop song. So like what caused you guys to gravitate and, and choose this song opposed to the other ones that were offered? I, I would like to hear from each of you individually also. Uh, so 
well hearing this song the first time it like uh, instantly got my attention just because she's like talking about each woman and like their stories and what they've been through in society and yeah that's that's how I took the song as yeah uh, I agree with Andrea I think that it was about how oh you're right about the amber alert <laughs> um so I think it was that she took each story of those women and like talked about them, like expressed them through her, like saying like, yeah, she might have gone through this, but technically we should all feel what she's feeling, you know? If that makes sense, I don't know if that makes sense. Personally for me, when I heard the song, it was like, I guess, cause um, like we said with the pace and everything that it was slow and steady, like I feel like, with that song it allowed you to like feel more because it's so long and spaced out so it's like it kind of gives you like room to like think about it instead of directly saying each fact even though she does present us with the stories of each woman like it's at a pace where you could kind of think have some room for your own thoughts so I feel like I really liked it because it was easier to like grasp and understand and then my final question um for each of you was there a particular story that you gravitated or related to or just liked more than the other for me, I really was like caught onto Saffrona's story because it for her it was basically like what I took from it is that she grew up without like a father, so she relied on two men, which caused her to be like into like the whole sex work thing, and that's like what caught my attention the most. Um, I think I related more to stanza two, where again, it was talking about um, that she belonged to both worlds, even though she's right in the middle, she felt like she belonged to both. And I think that's very true, because like I said, different ideals, but still you're right in the middle of everything. So you kind of relate to both sides, if that makes sense. Um, for me, it's not that I related, but um, I feel like I what caught my attention most was the sense about um on Sarah, because I feel like she um, like when they say strong enough to take the pain, she like, that's like I guess will like she's like I'm I'm strong enough, but that doesn't mean I sh like what how I interpreted it is like that doesn't mean I deserve the pain in a way, so it's like interesting to see like how she says like even though I'm strong enough, like that doesn't mean I have to because she says inflicted again and again. Um, great interpretation. Um, I, I really also love the way that you applied it to today's society with statistical data, like these are how many women have been trafficked. Um, these are how many women have that reported their rape, right? We don't even know <laughs> if that's an accurate number just because of what's being reported. Um, so dope, does anyone else have any questions for this group? You guys should have some questions. Um, I had a question. Um, I'm not sure if you guys mentioned it, but are the four women, like, are they characters that Nina, like, made up, like, so she could, like, talk about these subjects, or, like, were they, like, real women? I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like they're characters based off of real women, because, um, like, doing more investigating on the song the aunt sarah is like implying to the whole mammy thing and then as doing more investigating saffrona is a color like yellow which implies to biracial being biracial and then peaches is like a nickname that women usually get and just that was the way i like took it as she's implying it as real women but like not directly okay yeah that makes sense thank you and if i could just kind of yeah. chime in um help to assist um so they also embody four core stereotypes of black women um the tragic mulatto right in between two worlds um as andrea said the the mammy figure right on sarah um the jezebel is a characteristic that they have that's very common, um, which is the, the women who's in involved in the sex work. Um, there's one other stereotype that is escaping me now, but each woman embodies these stereotypes and she's providing context to the stereotype. Is there any other question that we have for this group? Okay, 
So um, we'll end there. So what we have left is Nas and uh, Nipsey Hussle loaded bases. So they will present on our final, which is next, yeah, next Thursday, not this coming Thursday, but the next Thursday. Um, groups that her that have presented, you don't have to worry about showing up for the final. Um, but Nas Project Window Group, Nipsey Hussle's Loaded Bases Group. I'm sorry, not no, uh, excuse me. Um, it should just be Nas. Am I correct? Everybody else went, but Nas. So that group who did Nas is um, that group who has not who is doing Nas. Excuse me. You have to show up to the final. Everyone else is good. Um, also, on your on the day of the final, which is next Thursday, you must submit your journals to me via Google Classroom by the end of the day, or by the end of the class. I, I think it's on 11.30 a.m. is what I have on the Google Classroom site. Um, so if you have them written, if you could just take a picture and upload it, that's fine, but just get it to me so that way I can get you guys your grades. Um, for those groups that already went, and this is our last time together, um, I do wanna thank you guys, man. I, I really enjoyed, um, the time we had together, I really enjoyed our conversations. And it was dope just seeing you guys come to life on the last day of presentation. So like, Emily, I don't think I ever seen you in class. So it's kind of cool to see you and see you do your thing. Um, same with some other, I'm trying to think who else I haven't seen too much. It was cool to kind of see. Um, Kamina, I've seen you very sparingly, but it was kind of cool to see you do your thing. Um, so yeah, Chelsea also, um, it was cool to see you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful that you guys gave me the opportunity to have these conversations. I learned a lot from you guys and continue to be critical, continue to be analytical and, you know, don't take things for, for face value. Do the research and ask the questions. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, although our semester is over, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, help, to holler at me. You know, I'll, I'll answer whatever I can. If you have questions about grad school, I can help out with that also. Um, but be well, y'all. And I will see Arianne, Wasan, and Alyssa next Thursday. Peace. Okay.